Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Good morning. Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Carol, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Greta, Kathleen, and of course, the Realm of Beings. Um, Quick interruption, the Realm, Greta, Kathy, and myself, aka the Shifting Impressions team, would like to extend an invitation to visit us on this 35th anniversary of the New Life Expo in New York City, from October 19th to the 20th. It will be at the New York Bar Historical Building on 44th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Greta will be performing complimentary psychic readings. Get your tickets online now at www.newlifeexpo.com. Thank you. (laughs) Back to our regular broadcasting. (laughs) We We at Shifting Impressions are very happy to be here on Transformation Network every Friday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 8 a.m. Pacific Time. Listeners, if you're new to this podcast, thank you for joining us and being part of this experience. These conversations will help you to look at your life and your creation of reality to see what you're creating how it shows up, and how to help you gain perspective so you can learn how to shift what you are creating in order to create what you want. So welcome, everyone, to new listeners and viewers to this podcast. Each week, Greta shares with us a quote given to her from the realm of beings, which first we discuss amongst ourselves quite lively, I might say. And later on in the show, the realm will join us and they'll expand on the quote that they provided. This week, the quote they provided is, and this is a good one for me to take heed, compassion can be of low or high vibration. If it is low, you are functioning in a state of saviorhood. If it is of high vibration and you are focused in a state of helping, we suggest that each one of you remain in high vibrational compassion to avoid becoming a victim of your own personal creations of reality. And Greta knows I have a hard time not crossing that line from empathy to sympathy because she's helped me a lot of times. I'm a very emotional person. I cry on the commercials that have puppies and whatever. I just have, and I just am always trying to help people. And I think it stems from, the major lesson, not loving myself unconditionally, because I'm always trying to be a savior to people to make them like me. And obviously it's me not liking me, which is why I always end up being a victim stuck in saviorhood. And when I looked up some of the synonyms for compassion, they use the word pity, which I think is too extreme. And they also use the word empathy, which I don't think is the same thing as sympathy. I feel like empathy is understanding someone, whereas sympathy is feeling sorry for them, which turns right back and bounces to you. So what a good, I try to just always say to myself, if I find myself going down into sympathy, I just remind myself that everyone has the right to create their reality the way they want. And I just need to learn how to not cross that line because I cross it way too often. So, Greta, what do you want to say? Hmm. Floor to Kathy? No, Kathy. <laughs> <saying no. laughs> not I'll today because I, I did that already last weekend. So not today. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
I think each one of us has taken an opportunity uh, to be uh, somebody's savior or not. Mm. You know, and um, but I like where it says compassion can be a low or high vibration. And I think most people would assume, uh, you know, how can compassion uh, be low vibration? But, you know, uh, compassion is um, caring. However, you can take the caring to the extreme. Right. You can take the, that's when it becomes low vibrational because you're taking it into uh, saviorhood. And what does that look like? That looks in your mind or in our minds, it's going to look like we're helping somebody. Mm. You know, oh, I'm helping those people. I have a lady that I facilitate for and she says, I always have to be kind to people. I said, that's that's all right. Uh, but she takes it into saviorhood because then the people that she's trying to save actually turn around. They either speak to her rudely, insult her, all kinds of things. And I told her, I said, that that whole experience, that's your personal experience. And you're experiencing uh -huh. that because uh, you tried, you came from a perspective of saviorhood. And, and I know that um, on the podcast somewhere, you know, I think we're getting ready to go into our fourth year. And somewhere along the line, we have talked about um, compassion. And you always hear us talking about, you know, unconditional love. But uh, this is a time to let's really examine compassion down to uh, its roots. And it says, it is low if you are functioning in a state of saviorhood. It is of high vibration if you are focused in a state of helping. How do you know the difference between you're helping somebody and you're saving somebody? And Carol alluded to that. You're going, and I think we've said it. I've said it that uh, you're going to know because mm -hmm. the very person that you're saving is going to come back at you. And they take advantage of you then. You think yeah, you're being course. nice and you do. I've, I've, it's happened to me so many times. And you end up looking like the bad guy because they take advantage of you. Right. Or they or they insult you. I've had uh, one woman, you know, she's been practicing saviorhood of her kids. And one day the young man came in and uh, she was telling him something and um, he looked like he wanted to hit her. Oh. You know, and I said, that is an extreme, uh, an extreme example of going down into sympathy, which can be taken as compassion. I'm just caring for that person. I'm giving them deep compassion. I feel for them. I understand them. So as you go, I feel, you go deeper and you go deeper and you're going deeper. And what you're going is into the rabbit hole with Alice is where you're going. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really a lot. And, the, and we want everybody out there in our audience to be aware of that. Watch yourselves. Watch yourselves with that. If you think, oh, I'm just a sweet and kind person and I like to help everybody. Well, examine that for a little while. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy. I see her shaking her head. Up yeah, because there. sometimes, you know, um, you think you're helping and it starts off as helping in your mind. And the next thing you know, how I know that I'm going down into saviorhood is I almost did it again. But this week I have been practicing unconditional love of self. And I, and I said, oh, I'll do that. And uh, I said, you know what? Do you really want to have that responsibility for this time period? Do you really want to um, um, take, take, take this responsibility? And I was thinking about helping. But then I had to think about it. Is it helping me? Is it, in other words, and, and, and I said, that's not selfish if I am uh, – Try, if I don't want to do it anymore, because when I saw that maybe what I was agreeing to do was not going to be in my benefit. And um, this has nothing to do with a, a, a person. It had to do with a, with an animal. They wanted me to watch the animal. And um, I started to watch. I said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And then I created for the person to say, I said, no, bring the animal to the house and let me see if the other animal will get along with my animal. And of course, my cat said, "Whoa, what's that?" And she left, and, and uh, I said, "This is just not." And she said, "It's okay if it doesn't work." In other words, I created to almost 
try to go into saviorhood, but then I kind of was able to kind of roll it back and say, and I didn't say, no, 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 it's okay. I let her, I let the person say, you know what? I will go make other arrangements. I'm glad we did it this way mm-hmm. and let it go. The old me would have said, no, I'll watch the animal. And then you know, I would have said it just like that. And that's saviorhood. Right. And the other thing is, People always want to make you feel bad or guilty if you Mm -hmm. don't think like they do. If, you know, oh, you have to save that poor dog or you have to save this person and you can't save anyone. When I watch them things, you watch Carol. Yeah. I used to do that. But you know what I say? I sit there and watch that. And I said, you know what? If they're filming this, that dog is okay. Exactly. And I said, you know, that dog is creating to have himself saved. And oh, boy. Good thing for that dog and that cat to create to be saved by that human being. And I said, now what are they going to do? That a person has all these dogs and cats in their house. And that's okay if that's what they want to do. But for me, it's like, I know physically when I go down into sympathy mode, there are things that happen to me physically. Because it eats away at me. And when it starts eating away at me. That's when I go, "Uh uh-oh, I became a crutch, and now that crutch is breaking me. It's not bringing me joy. Right. Greta, how do we, we, because you know me, and you know I do cross that line way too often. A lot of times I, I say to myself, you know, we have an old adage, you know, to look at something from someone or walk in someone else's shoes, and look at their perspective and honor their perspective that they're creating the reality the way they want to create it, which is good. But then sometimes I I cross the line into sympathy and I don't realize that I've crossed it. How do I keep myself from doing that? How do you recognize it? How do you recognize it? Like, why does it take me so long to recognize it? That's because um, you're uh, steeped in it. In other words, all of us, uh, you know, I I can be a savior myself. So I've had to really watch. You saved me, Greta. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I have to really be careful of that. That's one of the things that, that I do. Um, but how do you how do you stop it? First thing, uh, Kathy and Carol, uh, you have to look at it. You might. You know, there are different there are different stages of catching something. Sometimes you'll get so good at it, you'll see it coming when it's there right mm-hmm. away. And then you can QDR it right away, you know, and it's gone. Other times you'll be halfway in it, and then you're going to be looking and saying, Oh, look what I've done. But mm-hmm. but when you say, oh, look what I've done or look what I've created, you can do that double take and turn around and go right on back. You don't have to continue to walk down that road. Now, third thing, you'll be in it and you say, oh, oh, I'm really in it. You get in there, you stay in there. You want to try and save the people or the person or the animal or whatever. And, uh, and you'll know you're in it. Because that very person can turn around and say, I don't want to be bothered by you. Uh, Why are you getting into my business? Uh, I don't want to listen to that trash. Uh, You know, all kinds of things that are letting you know that that was an opportunity for your growth that you provided. But it's an opportunity you really didn't want in the first place because you don't want to be anybody's savior. So there are three stages of being aware. What you want to do is practice, practice it. It's not something that's just going to come easy. You got to, well, it can. Let me not say that. You can create it to be easy because it's going to be your creation of reality. But the thing is that you practice it. You practice being able to see it, know it by what you're, how you're coming toward the situation, what you're saying in reference to the situation. Are you honest with it when you say, or is it honesty? Do mm. you really want to ask yourself, do I really want to do this? Oh, gosh, she needs the help. Oh, God, I better do this. And it's like, I don't really, if, in other words, if you doubt, the minute you had that first thing of doubt that you're talking about, Greta, that's when you know you're going into, that's when you can come out of that. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you can come out. I want to reiterate, you can come out at any point. (laughs) But the thing is, do you want to get all the way to the other end of the spectrum before you realize it? So you want to start. And who are the people that we try to save first before we do anybody else? Is our children. So, you said our children. Yeah, but we should be trying to save ourselves alone. Yeah, our children, though, because uh, uh, being, uh, going down into sympathy, compassion that is sympathetic. Compassion that is sympathetic. Because the the quote is talking about compassion. So, you have a choice. Compassion can be empathetic or compassion can be sympathetic Mm -hmm. if it's sympathetic then note you are going deeper and deeper and deeper into saying oh let me help that person i've got to help that person like you said kathy you know you gave some really good examples and so did carol you know that uh we 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 get into that mode oh i can change the person you know, I I can change the person. So and 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 we don't we forget that we can't change anybody. You know, the only person that we can really change is ourselves. Ourselves. Because like last month, I think our whole theme was inner. Yes. If I remember correctly. Last month we talked about inner, inner, inner. That is so important. Uh to the audience, if you did not get a chance to see of uh, the uh, things that we talked about in July, review those four because it's all about your inner being and that's where you want to be. So you want to turn that compassion in a high vibration and turn it towards you. That's where you want to be. You want to be with within you and not outside of you mm-hmm. because you can't affect anything outside of you. I don't care how big it is. I don't care what it is. And you shouldn't create for other people to try to goad you into doing it because sometimes people will, oh, well, you know, that's your sister or that's your brother, but they don't want to take them in. Mm -hmm. And see, to me, that's a clue. So, well, that's your sister. Well, that's your mother. Okay, well, that might be my mother. However, you know, She's it's your not, mother too. <laughs> it doesn't, it, but it, no, but it, yeah, but it doesn't give you joy. So, and uh-huh. and not, not joy. It's like if it, if it feels like it's a burden. And I don't know if I'm saying it the right way because you know families are 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 kind of like a different. It's a different dynamic, and maybe it's a little stronger um, example using family. Uh-huh. And because if you're from a family that's very family and close and oriented, you know, um, people have a tendency to always tell you what you should do. They point that finger at you, like, just like that. But they never notice that there's three of them pointing back at them. It's always what the other person should do. And if you are a person that's on the sympathetic level, it's funny how they always freaking find you. They know who to go to in the family. That's the one that will go on down on the sympathetic level and take over that entire responsibility mm-hmm. and it'll eat her, eat that person alive. All of a sudden, your energy is drained. Mm-hmm. You, you are the one that I, you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. Or you take an uh, animal, you know, like that's why, you know, I tried to get a used dog and I tried to get a used, used dog. <laughs> But it's not like used, a car, Kathy. <laughs> okay, but just a minute now. A used dog, you don't know why the dog became, why the dog was abandoned. And you can bring it into your home and then all the anxiety, all the things that this animal has gone through, you don't know. And all of a sudden, your furniture, well, gee, I, I guess he thought that couch leg was a bone. And I mean, then, you know, it's like, then you feel guilty and you hold on to the dog and the dog's destroying your house, it's destroying your furniture, it's, the cat is destroying everything. And that's another reason when you know you were down in the saviorhood to me. And I decided, no used dog for me. And I created for them to tell me they wanted as much for a used dog as a new dog. So I said, well, I'll get a new dog. Mm-hmm. And that's what Spark is. Spark is a new dog. And isn't he a lovely dog, Greta? Oh. <laughs> I love me some spark. I call him Sparkle. He doesn't like Aww. me to call him that either. 
because it's so funny when I go over to Kathy's house and he'll run to run to the door to because he recognizes me and I won't call his name is Spark uh, Spark and but instead of calling him Spark I call him Sparkle Hi Sparkle he turns around and goes back in the opposite direction he's letting me know don't call me no Sparkle <laughs> but he goes he's my roadie he goes everywhere with me he's just you know. And actually, I was when I when I got him, I looked at several dogs. I had them in the room, and he was the one. I felt the energy, and something said, "Well, it was the, my realm, the, the realm that said that's the one to take." And so I brought him, and and Sparks been there ever since. You know, so you don't know, like when I you, you take in a relative, you don't know why the other person put him out because they're not going to tell you everything. You know, you just don't know. And like sometimes you watch where help a homeless teen, you know, foster, you know, take them in. And and sometimes I guess my question is, is helping them or is that saviorhood that people that do that? And I'm not saying that they should not. I don't want to please. I do not want to put that out there. Uh, but what is the difference with that scenario, Greta? You know, I think that if you stay in, let me help this person without sacrificing myself. Think like that. I think what you said, Kathy, was really important. Is that going to cause me a challenge? Mm. Do I feel good about following uh, that situation or accepting that person in my home? Do I, how am I going to be? It's like, we have a young man that's coming to live with us uh, for various uh, reasons. He, right now, he's experiencing being incarcerated. He's getting ready to be exonerated. Um, he's been in uh, prison, uh, uh, what is it, security prison for 18 years now. And his family wasn't able to take him in. And I know, you know, if you've been in a situation uh, where you've been in prison for 18 years inside a little small cell that's about the size of a uh, not even a large closet, uh, you know, you need some help with. Uh, but what I said to him was this. Uh, because he's been studying um, the the study the uh, lessons of the realm for about I've been with him now for seven years, and um, one thing I told him I said, "Well, you're going to have to come and live with Dad and me," because he calls my husband Dad. Okay, he calls me Auntie. I said, all right, that's another whole explanation, but I'll do that later. The idea is that what I said to him, I said, I want you to know you are coming to live with us, but I am not acting as your savior. Mm. I just I just told him that because I did not want to move into that. I said, I am here to help you be independent, not be dependent. Right. You know, so this is not about saving you. And he understood that because he, he understands the difference between saving, being somebody's savior and somebody's helper. You know, so he said, I she understand. saved and that's how he wound up there. Yeah. He yeah, went absolutely. He <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. He did. He did. And and <laughs> took on guilt. He was guilty. He felt guilty about the whole situation. You know, um, but it's interesting because I was facilitating for a woman who uh, it was my first day of facilitating uh, for her. And I told her, I said, I'm so sorry, but I can't do that right now. I have to ask you a question. I said, you are working because she works with incar people who are experiencing incarceration. So I asked her, I said, you have a gentleman that is because she mainly works with m males, not females. So I said, you have a gentleman that has been incarcerated for a murder that he did not commit. And I said, who is that person? She gave me one name. I said, no, that's not the person. She gave me this other person's name, which I cannot say on the air, but gave me the other person's name. And I said, yes. 
that's him. And that's how the whole situation started. I remember I one of his exercises was, how do you feel about yourself? You see, I couldn't, I could have gone down into a pity party. Oh my God. You know, I am so sorry for you. You've been, now he's been incarcerated for 18 years. Oh my God. Look at that. Look how you went in there so young and you, I could have gone there. I could have gone down and down and deeper and deeper, you know, but I didn't go there. Bottom line was if you're going down into a pity party, if you're going down into compassion that is based in sympathy, then you are not helping, assisting. You're not helping the person in the first Correct. place. Correct. Right. What if we clear up the definitions and the difference between empathy and sympathy? I think that might help the listeners have a better understanding of it. Okay. Give us your perspective, Carol. I, my perspective, and I hope I'm okay with this, is I feel empathy in that I feel like I understand other people. I can understand why they feel the way they do or why they're in their situation. Whereas sympathy, so I, I feel like I can empathize with them. Sympathy to me means I feel sorry for them. That word pity, as I told you in the definition when I looked it up, I think of that as a low vibration energy. That taking I, on their pain. Taking on yeah, their you're pain. taking on their pain and you're taking on their circumstances and you're opening yourself up to be taken advantage of. That's why I don't send sympathy cards either. Well, I think we should come up with empathy cards. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Yeah, here's a business idea. You know, let's, it's not let's the first time I thought about that. You know, in deepest empathy, I feel empathy. I understand you lost your right. mother. Okay. But, you know, sympathy. Oh, they remind because what happens is it reminds you of your loss. Right. It right. takes you down and says, I feel sorry. Oh, the weight of this, the weight of that. And you just feel like a sinking. And because you are, you're carrying, that's a good, great example, Kathy. You're carrying someone else's weight on you. And I think mm -hmm. for a mental equivalency, your shoulders. I had someone I was speaking to who told me he was experiencing shoulder pain. And when I looked it up into the, men, you know, in the mental equivalencies book, um, I use Martell more because it's so specific. I said, you're obviously feeling like, you know, you're, you're helping too many people and it's like carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And he was like, oh my God, you hit the nail on the head. He says, I'm always giving and helping everyone else. I said, there you go. So, but well, I, you know, empathy I is important because I think you have to understand, you know, that other people deserve respect for their feelings and for their creation of reality. But and it's taught wrong, Carol. It's taught wrong because yeah. the people in the church will say, where's your compassion for your neighbor? Where's your compassion for this? And they get all, and it's, but they don't make the distinction between the low vibration that we're talking about, the compassion and, and the, excuse me, um, where you're not in saviorhood. Right. They want they because they all think that they want to be Jesus. They all think you want to, you know, sacrifice yourself. And, and the that's where that saviorhood comes from. Jesus didn't, he wasn't really a savior because he understood creation of reality. So it's more kind empathy. of ironic. More empathy. More yeah, empathy. empathy is where it's at. Gotta go to break, Carol. Go to break. I'm gonna sit here and do this. Can I can I say this example yes, before we go to break? Of course. Um, when I first started doing the energy work, transformational science energy work, um, a gentleman, I was teaching in a school, and this gentleman whom I liked as just as a person uh, was having heart attacks. Everybody in the, the teaching staff knew he had a heart attack. He had had about three heart attacks already. Ooh. So I don't usually go around telling people I do this work. So, But with him, I went up to him. I think it was just the second year I was doing it. And I went up to him. I said, look, I said, you know, when you get tired of having these heart attacks, call me <laughs> or come to me and talk to me about it when you're tired. You know, 
So he came to me and said, Greta, it took about a week or so, Greta, I, I'm really tired of uh, going through this experience. And they're telling me now, my doctor tells me now I have to have triple bypass surgery on my heart. I said, mm, interesting. So, um, you know, I started doing the energy work, the facilitation work uh, for him. And up until that uh, day that he died, which he died of something else, he never did have to have the uh, triple bypass surgery. But this is the reason why I'm telling you the story. I worked on him. I worked on two people that, that night. I worked on a grandmother who had had a, some type of infection somewhere. Um, it was I don't know what it was. I can't really remember now. And I worked on him. Okay, the next day, I wake up, and I'm going, ooh, I have a pain right here. Mm, I, I had a pain right here, but wait a minute, it wasn't over. When I talked to the grandmother, she was a grandmother, I told her, I said, what was that? I said, I was sent to your vaginal area. And she said, oh, she, she never told me. She forgot to tell me, right? She said, oh, uh, it was very painful. I've been having pain in, in my vaginal area for a while. And, you know, no one's been able to help me with it. I said, well, do you still have it? She said, oh, no. I said, well, they after I did the work that you wanted me to do, that I was sent to your vaginal area and worked on that. So cleared it up, you know, through her ex through her, because, you know, we believe in participants. We don't believe that we go around healing everybody. Everybody's got to heal themselves. But the thing is that what happened, my chest area started hurting. I started having pains in, in my vaginal area all at the same time. I said, oh, Lord, I said, what did I do? And I realized that when I worked on the gentleman. You felt sorry. I felt sorry for him. So then because you can bring to yourself the very thing that you are being sympathetic over somebody else. So that's how I became started having the experience because I said, I said, where, where was your pain? And he showed it. Oh, it's right here. I said, oh, okay. So then I knew. I said, Greta, you sitting there trying to take care of something to a heart attack. Especially if, the, especially if you can relate to what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and when she told me she was, you know, uh, she had had that vaginal infection for, for, I don't know, at least two years or something like that. Ooh. And then what did I do? I took it on because I felt sorry. I went down into sympathy. I did the work from compassion of sympathy instead of compassion of staying you know, in my own little world and, and not in my own little world, but you know what I mean? Staying and recognizing I'm not here to save you. Right. I'm just here to support you in saving yourself. And isn't there a saying that you can only help those if you can't help those that don't help themselves? I in think. the Bible, Jesus said, oh, yeah, yeah go ahead. Heal, heal thyself or something. But it's true. I mean, if somebody I've had experiences with people in my life who were alcoholics or drug addicts and I would see, you know, this person's in trouble. But if they don't acknowledge that they have a problem, it's not up to me to try to save them. And at least no. in most cases, I recognized it and walked away. But it's the little ways that I end up in trouble with the sympathy part, but I'm working on it. I, we're going to have to take a break. And when we come back <laughs> off with their heads, the, the queen of hearts. No, that's a, no, that's a break. Need a break. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought you were emulating Alice and uh, no, we got to do the break. <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay. Listeners. We're at that point in our show where we're going to take a short break. We're going to ask you to be patient and stay with us. Cause when we come back, we're going to hear from the realm and I can't wait to hear what their input is on this week's quote. So please be with us when we return. Thank you.
Thank you, listeners. Welcome back. We're happy that you decided to stay. We're at that portion of the podcast where the realm will come in and speak through Greta about the quote they provided for this week. So, realm, are you with us? We are absolutely with you and and ready to roll. Lively, lively. We love that. Okay. This week, we're talking about compassion. The quote was, compassion can be of low or high vibration. It is low if you are functioning in a state of saviorhood. It is of high vibration if you are focused in a state of helping. We suggest that each one of you remain in high vibrational compassion to avoid becoming a victim of your own personal creations of reality. And we really have been discussing like crazy the difference between sympathy and saviorhood versus empathy and understanding. So what would you like to add? Well, the first thing that we want to say is that uh, most people think of compassion, you know, with that they are loving and caring and it's high vibrational and they probably wonder, how dare we write a create a uh, quote that says that compassion can be low vibration, you see? Because it's the way it's presented, it's presented it to, uh, to you as being something wonderful. Well, it can be something wonderful if you make it wonderful. But you can go get, you can approach. Uh, a situation with compassion and be sympathetic about it, you can do that. However, when you do it, be ready for the creation of reality that you are creating out of that. That's you it. see, because we are in a constant, and I'm including uh, the realm in that too, because we create realities as well. They might not necessarily be the same realities or based in the same types of situations that yours are, but note that we do create reality, you see. So, but the thing is, is choice. Reality is choice. What, where do you want to be? And see, a lot of times people will take on compassion through sympathy because they don't love themselves. They will love other people outside of themselves and see themselves as last, as last. And it's not selfish to love yourself first. It's important to do that. It's important that you show compassion and deep consideration for yourself, you see. Compassion is like, it, it's got that word, uh, passion in it. With passion, come, uh, being a prefix, uh, meaning with. So with passion, I'm passionate about playing tennis. I'm passionate about watching movies. I'm passionate about teaching others. Compassion. But you don't want to step over that little thin line. Mm-hmm. There's a little thin line there that where you can just hop over and you go, oh, oh. And you decide to say to yourself, I don't think I want to be in this type of situation. You know, you might hop over uh, because there was a person, your friend had breast cancer. She calls you on the phone and says, you know, uh, I've just found out I have breast cancer. And then you go, oh, God, Mary, how did that happen to you? I am so sorry that you're experiencing that. What can I do for you? Uh, Just let me know. I'll do anything you want for me to do for you to help you through this situation. Oh my God. You see, that's a sympathy scenario. 
What is an empathetic scenario? Oh, I've just come down with canvas cancer. And oh, you know, Mary, I see you in perfect health. Mary, I'm here for you if you need my help. You know, instead of the other. So with the other, with this, you're there, you're not of let me save you from yourself. You see, when you become a savior, you're really trying to save the individual from themselves. And now let's take it a little bit deeper. The reason why you want to save the person uh, before yourself is that you feel that you need to be saved. Yeah. So you're projecting your need to be saved onto somebody else. You see, there are a lot of ways to get to compassion connected with sympathy. Mm. There are a lot of ways. And so you want to be aware of that. So we encourage people in the audience to pay attention to what you're thinking. Pay attention to what you're speaking. Because and 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 pay attention to how you feel about it. Have you gone down into uh, the rabbit hole and you're sitting down there with Alice sipping tea and then you've got really so deep into it, uh, the uh, rabbit comes over and joins you. And then you're still getting deeper and deeper into it. So who comes next? The Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. He's my favorite. <laughs> now, when the Queen of Hearts shows up, Mm. then we highly suggest that you do a, a quick turnaround and come up out of that rabbit hole. Off with their heads. <laughs> off with their heads. It, uh, exactly. That's what she Exactly is. off with their heads. And what does that mean? You've been so sympathetic with Mary about having breast cancer. You go to the doctor and says, oh, I hate to tell you this, but we think that you have are experiencing uh, a carcinoma in your liver. Oh. You can actually create the dis-ease that you were so sympathetic about with somebody else. You can create it in you. Mm. I'm so sorry that you were foreclosed on your house. I'm so sorry that had happened. I really am. You might even shed a tear. You might even let tears collect in your eyes because you feel so sorry that this happened to the family. So lo and behold, what happens with you? You get a notice in the mail. Sorry, Miss So-and-so. Uh, we hate to inform you, but we're about to place your house in foreclosure. You see, you draw, I will say this again, you draw to yourself the very thing that you are showing sympathy for in someone else. That's one reason why you don't want to go there. Realm, can I ask you about a situation, and I'm never really sure how to address it. Um, I know Greta's taught me like when someone had someone in their family transition, and you see all over social media, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss and sympathies to you and your family. And Greta always said, you shouldn't say I'm sorry. What is a better way to show it or to give them empathy? What words would portray and convey the feeling of empathy for their loss to say, I understand your loss? I mean, I'm, I'm never sure how to say it. I think you just said it, Carol, oh. when you say, I, I understand how you feel. Okay, I like that. I okay. understand that you feel sad. I understand that. 
but I'm not going to go down in the rabbit hole. Right. You see, because I don't need to experience that myself at the moment. I realize that we all have to make our transition in some way or form or another. You see, uh, but the thing is that uh, you don't want to go down there with, oh, my God. You see. And then you're using God to help you get there. And God is external. Yes. We shouldn't Instead be of doing externalizing external. that the force, the force, that wonderful force that supplies us all with the ability to have compassion of the highest level. You see. Well, I just use the word, I don't use sympathy. Um, and I just looked up the words. I just, for me, because I don't feel like it's a sympathetic word, I say condolences. Yeah, I've said that too. Is that acceptable? Of, of course. Oh, good. Because you're, you're staying at a certain understanding. Okay. You're not going into that woe is me, mm. uh, giving condolences. I know Greta sometimes just say rest in peace and sends a little gift or whatever you call those things with a candle, one little candle and says rest in peace. You know, and you want to you want to make the per lift the person, not tear them down and and bury them in the ground. You just say, "I'm sure if if your person or your husband or your daughter or your son is fine, they are in a state of peace." You see, we should have things that say transition. In rest, <laughs> instead of rest in peace, transition in peace. I like Absolutely. that. You like but, that one? Yeah, well, okay, so but there we go. Empathy for your loss. Or em empathy. <laughs> yeah, let's do, yeah. let's do those cards. <laughs> transition in I'm peace. I'm telling you, or, or we gave somebody a good business idea who's going to make a lot of money from us today. <laughs> oh. Well, wow. so I, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just realm. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just thinking because I had an incident where I was. Um, well, you already know because you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I was facilitating, and I went down on sympathy level, and I've been. Um, I guess I was kind of ready to go down there, but you know what it was? What triggered it was. It was like it was a, a very a similar a similar situation for me, just different. And I, you know what it was? Ah, uh, that's what I wanted to ask you. You can go into a sympathetic mode if you can relate to what the person is going through. Is that could that have tri could that trigger like going down to a sympathetic mode without you even recognizing that? You take it on. You feel sad. You feel downtrodden. You feel helpless. You feel hopeless. You see, you might even have fear depending on what the situation is. Having fear is of something, is being compa having compassion in low vibration. Mm. You see, fear can appear through there as well. And you know, we've always talked about that fear is a very strong, low vibrational emotion. And that it can connect with other uh, emotions with it. You see. So it's... Uh, the one thing that we will say uh, uh, once again to the audience is to stay in high vibration of compassion as much as you possibly can. And it's okay to just help people. That's okay. Have a helping thought in your mind. Have a helping emotion inside your inner being. You don't have to say, let me save you. 
let me go down there in that valley of condition and reach out and grab your hand as you pull me into the pit with you. Because mm. that's what's happening. Yeah, and a lot of times it seems to be based on um, strong kind of religious training and upbringing where you are, you know, it's your duty. That's your, it's your duty to do this. It's your duty. And, and uh, what, you know, what would they always say? What would Jesus do? You know, they always say that. What would Jesus do? Well, would Jesus, uh, <laughs> Kathy, ask him, you met him recently. Just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, listeners. I'm That's not even an gonna, private joke. <laughs> I'm not even gonna no uh no because part of it is you know it's it's ingrained to make you feel sorry for someone because you know we live in we live in a space to me, and I guess I should ask the realm. Um I'm trying to formulate a question realm around this. Uh the religious when people see what happens when you lack compassion. But they 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 don't they don't stick with the high vibrational compassion. In other words, they say you lack compassion for people. But you're saying it's okay to have compassion. But you have to understand which side is the low vibration, which side is the high vibrational. So when we're dealing with like we've been so conditioned to think the low vibrational way, am I wrong when I say that realm? That is uh, that is what. Uh, we have been calling your go-to. Many people go to compassion at the sympathetic level. And some people uh, feel that uh, it's necessary that they're not showing uh, the person or the people unless they go down there. You know, they want you to, f you, the individual wants to feel serious letting you know I'm serious about the pain that you are experiencing. I'm, I'm serious for that. You see, so, so it, it grows and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Whereas all you have to say is, I understand how you feel. That's and it. It's not your responsibility. It's, their creation of reality and you can't assume anyone else's creation of reality you can o only take responsibility for your own absolutely i have to constantly remind myself of that right absolutely. and you know right and you know what you cannot take on any other low vibration when other people want to tell you boy you know you really don't want to help anybody it's not you no know, giving somebody a couple of a 20 dollars is helping Agreeing to pay their rent because they don't want to work. That's sympathy. I'm sorry. That's a difference. That's and, being taken advantage of. And if you feel is. if you feel obligated that it's your duty and you're trying to save them and by doing that, and, and that's to me, that is sympathy. And I'm not doing that. But go ahead, Carol, because we gotta bring No, I, I was gonna just say that, you know, always remembering what we say every week in the realm tells us to love yourself unconditionally. And I know that I myself cross from empathy to sympathy many times because I don't love myself unconditionally a lot of times. And right. I'm looking for acceptance from other people because I haven't hey, accepted myself. That's a great segue again, Karen Kulichella. Unconditional love hey. and acceptance of others yields eternal peace. Ah. And that's what we're going to be talking about next week, because that's the quote the realm gave us. Yay. Go ahead, Carol. Bring Greta. Greta. Oh, okay. Greta, 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 we're going to get back. Greta back. We want to thank the realm. We enjoy and their wisdom that they share with us. Thank you to Transformation Network for allowing us to broadcast this podcast. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, Greta and Kathy. And until we create each other again, Stay in peace. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with the realm and me, Greta, 
each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all. So begin to create the realities you want. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.